everyone, and welcome to AEW Dark. I'm Excalibur, joined, as always, by Taz, and we are jumping straight into the action tonight. This is a tag team contest set for one ball with a 20-minute time limit. Approaching the ring at a combined weight of 499 pounds, the chairman, Sean Spears, and Warlow. Taz, the pinnacle, Sean Spears and Wardlow in action here tonight, but perhaps the most conspicuous member of the pinnacle, MJF, butting heads with CM Punk last Wednesday night on Dynamite. Oh, I enjoyed it very much, to be honest with you. I think that uh, basically MJF read the riot act in a gentlemanly-like manner to CM Punk, who deserves any kind of ear lashing he can get. He being Punk. I don't like Punk anymore at all, you know that. Well, I think there's quite a few fans and quite a few members of the locker room that would beg to differ. However, we will turn our attention to this tag team match right now. And their opponents from Bear Mountain, New York, got a combined weight of 604 pounds. Bear Bronson, Bear Boulder, Bear Country. Hey, I, I'm gonna tell you, Excalibur, this is not gonna be a walk in the park or a walk in the forest. <laughs> Get it? Um, for um, <laughs> for Sean Spears and Wardlow dealing with Bear Country. Yeah, last week on Dark, we saw Wardlow in action. He absolutely mauled his opponent. I don't think things are gonna go quite the same way here tonight, opening things up on AEW Dark from AEW Universal here in Orlando, Florida, home in Universal Studios. And before this match gets underway, I'd like to remind everybody that AEW's Elite General Manager mobile game, the Elite Season Pass, is now available. Seven new wrestlers, brand new story mission, fun gimmicks, all this and more in the number one wrestling GM mobile game available for free on the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store. I love games. <laughs> you a big Tamagotchi guy, Taz? I love Tamagotchi, you kidding me? Anyway, here we go. We got uh, Bear Bronson going against uh, <laughs> going against the Sean Spears. Not the chairman, he's the Sean Spears. The chairman, the Sean Spears, the accountability buddy of Wardlow, the man that has been designated by MJF to help try to keep Wardlow in line. Spears elevates over the top of Bronson. Nice cartwheel. Yeah, yeah, it's smooth right there, and it doesn't seem like Bear Bronson is too happy with the uh, shenanigans of uh, my man Sean Spears right there with the million dollar smile. Uh, on a scale of one to 11, what would you give that cartwheel to? Give it probably a nine and a half. I mean, it was shades of... Not a 10? No, shades of, uh, you know, the U.S. Olympic gymnast team, male or female. But on bar right here by Sean Spears. Uh, yes, you understand. Yeah, what, when I look at Sean Spears, I think of uh, Kerry Strug. Yeah, right there, <laughs> right there. Uh, oh, he got tackled oh. up there. Yeah, he got nailed. He hit the second cartwheel, which is probably a seven, and got lit up. Well, oh, that's a three. Right oh, that's a three. <laughs> three. Three is generous, I think. <laughs> Bear Bronson looked like he dropped his wallet and picked it up. Oh, wait, I know this gimmick. I know. I, oh, oh, he got oh. Pulled, the roll up middle finger, yeah. Sean Spears giving his finger over to the Bear Bronson. Bear Bronson taking a bite and making the tag out to Boulder. Bear Country in control. Well, was in control of Spears. Spears broke away, fired in that chop, asking for a timeout. Oh, uh, that's Big Red Jones right there. Big Barley Bear Boulder. Boulder Bear from Bear Country up in Binghamton, even though they're not from there, they're from Bear Country. No, they're from Bear Mountain. Uh, all right. Now this is a big time matchup. You've got Wardlow and Boulder, the two biggest members of their team, two of the biggest members of the AEW locker room tying up in the center of the ring. Uh, no, you are correct, and it's tough, man. That's tough goings to deal if you're Wardlow to deal with someone who's a prehistoric size individual like Boulder is. He's built like a dinosaur. No disrespect to Luchasaurus. Here we go. Come on, Boulder. Wardlow looking for the Greco Roman knuckle lock, and Boulder with perhaps an early advantage. Or no, Wardlow. Maybe breaking Boulder down. Wow, real even matchup here, and Wardlow sweeps the legs out. 
Yeah, it sure went right in for that double, and that was smart to take Big Boulder off his feet. Quarter by surprise. Look, Boulder put his put the brakes on. Boulder sends Wardlow into the ropes in a shoulder tackle. Sends Wardlow the outside. Was it the prettiest shoulder block ever? It was very beefy, but it was effective. Get it together. And you hear Sean Spears trying to coach up Wardlow on the outside as Bronson Tope Suicida splits through the pinnacle. Very impressive by Bronson there. Yeah, Sean Spears dazed by the Tope Suicida. Spears returned into the ring and Bronson keeping the pressure on the chairman. Well, he got, yeah, see, Bronson knows he's got momentum right now. That was biting the head. Look at this, that's Calvin. It's, uh, I mean, I think maybe Bronson trying to, trying to pack on some pounds for hibernation season this winter. But, <laughs> whoa, Wardlow. Oh, nice double leg there. Good double. And big time hammer fists from Wardlow, Mr. Mayhem himself. And Wardlow just backing Bronson into the corner. Multiple shoulder tackles, uppercuts. This is a blistering storm by Wardlow. What a spine buster. Ted's power right there by Wardlow. Superpower, yes. Yeah, think back to when Hangman Adam Page won the AEW World Championship. He issued the press release, and the one man he said he didn't want to face was Wardlow. He named Wardlow specifically. <laughs> yeah, no, that's interesting. Hey, look, the new champ, he's not dumb. I don't like him either, but he's not dumb, meaning Hangman Adam Page. And, oh, I know what's coming up, Excalibur. I know what's coming up. Could it be a spine buster? Or a power buster, a power bomb. What the hell's a power buster? We just made up a new move. All right, well, we'll wait to, wait to see as Wardlow, he does have Bronson in power bomb position. Bronson, though, kicks his legs. Wardlow, once again, looking for the power bomb. No, Bronson reversal. Back body drop in, just sits down on the chest of Wardlow. Big ass he can right on the chest of Wardlow by Brad Bronson. Just imagine the odor. These bears, these bro these bear country guys, they smell like rancid bears. Here come Boulder. Boulder comes in and Sean Spears runs right into two consecutive clotheslines, a scoop and a slam, courtesy of Bear Boulder. Boulder just bull rushing, oh. or I guess bear rushing, Sean Spears into the corner. Wardlow. And those are some big time elbow strikes from Boulder. Fast, good athleticism by the big man. He's coming in again. Wow, bear Boulder sandwiching the pinnacle in the corner. Wardlow is in trouble. Bear Boulder charging in once again, but charged into the boot. Well, then we got him lined up. Wow, not many men can hold on to Wardlow like that and power him down with the power slam, but Wardlow kicking out at one. Tell you what, I feel bad for the ring. It took a beating right there in that power slam. Good Lord, the amount of weight that hit the mat. Yeah, that's got to be close to, uh, to 600 pounds, if not even more of weight crashing down in the center of the ring. And we have Boulder off the middle rope. Whoa, so press the Wardlow avoids. Amazing, a guy that size with a, oh, what a uh, moonsault, but look at that clothesline. The clothesline only getting the two count on Boulder. Was that like uh, like the Incredible Hulk type thing? What's the Marvel comic, one of those comics guys used to do that clothesline? The thing, who was that? <laughs> I believe it was the Incredible Rock. <laughs> oh, the Incredible Rock. Oh, look at the power again. Warlow with the fireman's carry. Sense. Gets sent to the outside by Boulder. Sean Spears up to the top. Oh, came in with a double sledge. Boulder caught him with a goozle. Massive power slam again by Boulder. Yeah, he signaled for something, did Boulder. And then he's going to tag Bronson, I guess. Here we go. Bear Country likes to. 
Likes to use this assisted splash, this bear splash as they their love finisher. To yell. They love to yell and eat small animals. Oh, oh my God! Wardlow countered with the casualty of war as Bronson was dropping. Wow, what a counter, what a win. Here are your winners, the team of Sean Spears and Wardlow. Big backfire by Bear Country to your point right there. Wardlow, I mean, he obviously had Bear Country scouted well. Great job. A tremendous victory by Sean Spears and Wardlow to kick us off here tonight on AEW Dark. Check this out, Excalibur. We got ladies action. Kylie King collides with Renee Michelle. This should be real good. This is coming at you right now. Why be queens and have sons when we can be kings and have it all? This particular moment is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Painesville, Ohio, Kylie King. Yes, you know what one of my favorite things about the AEW Universal era of Dark is? Um, well, I would probably say, um, I would think it's maybe, um... And her opponent from Washington, D.C., Renee Michelle. Is it, is it the what they call? No. Maybe it's, well, yeah, I don't know. It's when Justin Roberts introduces matches as this particular contest. Oh, yeah, he's swami and snarky. That's the reason. <laughs> well, you can see Justin Roberts tomorrow night on AEW Dynamite live coast to coast. And you will also see the final TBS tournament quarterfinal round matchup. Chris Statlander and Ruby Soho. The winner will advance to face Nyla Rose in the semifinal round match. And you will see the battle of the undefeated tag teams, Gun Club, Billy and Colton Gunn take on Sting and Darby Allen. All of that, so much more, live tomorrow night, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific on TNT. Yeah, really, uh, uh, it's gonna be a battle, and we've seen it erupt over the last couple of weeks, starting at uh, Rampage a, a few weeks back when Billy Gunn and Darby Ooh. Allen went one-on-one, -on -one. but right now, Kylan King and Renee Michelle squaring off center of the ring. Renee Michelle got the better of that exchange, but Kylan King sends Renee into the ropes. Well, speaking about eruption, this thing here between Renee Michelle and King is definitely erupting. Look at these forearm shots by Renee Michelle, back elbow too. Renee Michelle charge again, another elbow strike. Kylan King sinking down in the corner. Renee Michelle doing a good job of keeping the pressure on here. Yeah, it's good, a good offensive attack by Renee Michelle. Her pacing's perfect. I'm hoping she knocks out the referee, Bryce Remsburg. I despise that man. Is that because you have to sit next to John Silver in first class all the time? <laughs> <laughs> I will not comment on that. <laughs> Well, roundhouse kick missed, but the, the back heel kick by Renee Michelle. Michelle's gonna pull off the upset. No, King kicking out. That was a big time shot by Renee Michelle right there. Yeah, no, it really was, dude. And you could see, uh, if you haven't heard the referee Bryce Renberg too, it wasn't three. But Renee Michelle uh, was really intense and pissed off that she didn't get the victory right there. Now controlling the arm is King, though. What you got in mind? Kylan King wrenches the arm, sends Renee Michelle into the corner, follows up with a lariat, and follows up a running back elbow strike. Kylan King brings Renee out to center, courtesy of that German suplex with the release. Kylan King hooks the far leg. Ah, Renee Michelle kicking out. She's still got some fight left in her, Yeah, Taz. no, no, you're right, man. That, that's good toughness kicking out of a German suplex like that. I remember the days when a German suplex released like that would beat someone, but I digress. Let's see what we got here. <laughs> Kylan King bringing up her. Oh, Kingdom Falls. Just like that, Kylan King scores the win. Kylan King. Talk about beating someone. 
The Kingdom Falls will definitely beat someone. We're showing Renee Rochelle fall hard. Great job by King right there. Guy Lynn King picking up yet another victory here on AEW Dark. Too Fast, Too Fuego has been on a tag team roll. But Fuego does so, you have a chance to post a huge singles victory here tonight against all ego Ethan Page on AEW Dark. Ethan Page, a man who since the second he stepped foot in All Elite Wrestling has not stopped running his mouth. But guess what, Ego? You're not the only one that likes to talk. And now that I finally got my opportunity to do so, you won't be able to shut me up. But don't worry, because I walk it like I talk it. And that's fast and brass, because if you ain't first, you're last. Every time you see Fuego Del Sol, I either try hard or I die hard. So I don't give a damn whether they call you the man of the year, the man of the week, the man of the month, the man, the myth, the legend, they call me fire for a reason. Because every time I step in the ring, I give them hell. And tonight will be no different. Ethan Page, it's flame on, game on. Tag team action coming up next here on AEW Dark. Santana and Ortiz of the Inner Circle in action right now. Attraction set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Making their way to the ring from New York, New York, at a combined weight of 420 pounds, Santana and Ortiz. How annoying is Justin wow. in that moment? In that moment, Justin was probably one of my best friends. That annoyed me. It was a little too long with the, with the, with the uh, Rolling Riders. La, 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 la. You know, you know when you're taking the uh, shopping cart out of the store and you run over those little, uh, <laughs> those little nubs, like nubs, the, you know, the little safety things. Yeah, yeah, they just go <laughs> like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's that's what Justin Roberts reminded me of. Right yeah, there. that's because he has a fake tongue. And their opponents, the team of Gus De La Vega and Brandon. Gold. These two young men are in grave danger. Santana Ortiz uh, will beat the brakes off of most people in tag team in the world, in tag teams in this world. And you see Santana, I'm sorry, Ortiz right there. For those of you new to AW programming, welcome to our YouTube channel. And uh, Ortiz is the gentleman yeah. in the tank top. Yeah. Not, not sure why you skipped into the third match, but whatever, <laughs> like, you know, just live your life <laughs> as best you can. It's the internet, bro, go crazy, you know what I mean? Side headlock right here, Ortiz. <laughs> Well, Taz, you know, the thing about Santana and Ortiz is that they are ranked number five, but they've been really mired in this rivalry between all ego Ethan Page, Scorpio Sky, and American Top Team over the last couple months, and they're such a good tag whoa, whoa, team that whoa. they've hung out. Oh, look at this, upset maybe. Well, they, they've hung on to this number five ranking despite, you know, this, this ongoing clash with Sky Page and American Top Team. Right, yeah, no, no, and, and I agree, but see, the thing with Santana Ortiz, that's a great spine buster there. You know, and you know, you, you know these guys a long time, Excalibur, and they are always focused. It doesn't matter who comes at them. They're ready to go. They don't care how, how big the opponent is, how small the opponent, how famous the opponent is, how famous they're not. It doesn't matter. They just go full throttle. Nice inside fireman's carried it by Ortiz. And by the way, dude, we've mentioned in the past, the shape, the physical condition Ortiz has gotten himself in, man. He looks phenomenal. Yeah, Ortiz continues to look great here, and he makes the tag out to Santana. Santana really the heavy hitter oh, yeah. for this duo. As that back elbow takes Brandon Gore off his feet. And that's not nothing taken away from Santana. He looks great also. It's just that Ortiz, he cut a couple of pounds, I think, over the past few months, has worked really hard at that. You know, and you see right now, Ortiz now all over my man Gore here. He's in trouble, Gore. Yeah, the hammer throw across the ring. And Santana and Ortiz, you know, they oh, had their attention diverted from tag team competition. But think about how dangerous they will be once they're able to focus on climbing the top five and getting a shot at the AEW World Tag Team Championship. Well, you're right because uh, you see right here a little respect towards the late, great Eddie Guerrero right there with these three amigos. Perfect vertical suplexes, spinning his hips. And just to digress for a second, I remember, you know, obviously Eddie was a friend of mine, but I remember when I 
after I got out of the ring and I started commentating, and I wrestled Eddie a bunch, but then commentating those three amigos. And I remember the first time he did it. And every time I see guys pay that respect towards him, I can't help but think about the first time I saw him do it in a different place. <laughs> you know, so it just brought me back. But these two guys, Santana and Ortiz, man, they just, they, they understand what it's like. They know, you're talking about the top five. They know what it's like and how competitive this tag team division is here in AEW. And uh, they're deadly. There's, it's a matter of time before they're tag team champions. Look at this teamwork. Wow, tremendous teamwork. Ortiz rolling Santana back. Santana coming back with a cutter. And Gus De La Vega is going to be outlined in shock. One, two, and three. Bro, outlined in chalk. Consider that stolen. Oh, that's a good line, bro. Damn, I like that. <laughs> well, it's a good line. It's that's a good stuff, right? Good there. finisher by Santana and Ortiz. And if you are a tag team here in AEW, watch your backs. Here we go. We got ladies action featuring Sky Blue right now. This should be real good. This young lady can really move around the screen real good. Looking forward to it. Here comes Excalibur right now. This next guy is a set for one ball with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Chicago, Illinois, Sky Blue. Taz, I know you're not a super sentimental guy, but it was such a great moment a few months ago in Chicago, Sky Blue being offered the shot at AEW. From San Juan, Puerto Rico, La Rosa Negra. But she is set to take on La Rosa Negra, the Black Rose of Puerto Rico. Great action here in the women's division. And before this match gets too far underway, I want to remind you that next week, AEW will be making our Long Island debut at the brand new UBS Arena at Belmont Park, Wednesday, December 8th. And then the first rampage of the TBS era kicks off at the Prudential Center in Newark, New Jersey, Wednesday, January 5th, 2022. Tickets for both events on sale right now, AEWTIX.com and Ticketmaster.com. Right now, we're seeing Sky Blue. She is uh, she's getting beat up on right now. She's got to try and stop this momentum here. Got La Rosa Negra taking Sky Blue up. Tremendous power. And then the spine buster. Wow. Whoa, whoa, Two. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Watch out. Why are you too lazy, oh, La Man. La Rosa, she really, yeah, I heard, yeah her, she, she really went right out Sky Blue right away, not letting her get any opportunity to get momentum. Shutting her down real quick early in this match. Oh, but Sky Blue turns the tables on Rosa Negra, takes her down with the clothesline. Sky Blue, I think, sensed the danger that she was in and really kicking it into a second gear. Rosa Negra charges her right, and that's good, right? Yeah, little overzealous was Negra, and she got caught with that foot in the face. Watch out here. The uh, work on Ronner from Sky Blue takes down Rosa. But Sky Blue bringing Rosa up in the corner, doing a good job of keeping the pressure on her opponent. Oh, leg lariat in the corner. Sky Blue comes off the Bandera, sends Sky Blue out to the apron. But the high roundhouse, hit, roundhouse kick knocks Rosa back towards center. Yeah, what's well, Sky Blue? She got something in mind. She get out the way and then just that back heel kick right to the face. Sky Blue up to the top, top dive and cross body. Low trajectory, but she still landed like a ton of bricks on her opponent. Yeah, sometimes those low ones, man, those cross bodies, they hurt like hell. Oh, belly to belly, yeah, kind of traditional style. Folk style type of belly belly su suplex. Shades of the franchise Shane Douglas. Oh, Sky Blue. Almost like a flatliner drop. Rosa Negra and Sky Blue scores the win. The winner of this match, Sky Blue. Wow, Sky Blue's upward trajectory continues here in AEW. Coming up next here on AEW Dark, Allen Angels of the Dark Order, number five with negative one in his corner. In action next. Join the Dark Order.
This man is set for one fall. With a 20 minute time limit. Being accompanied by negative one and members of Dark Order from the keep. Running 184 pounds, Allen Five. Angel. Join the Dark Order. As the American Dragon, Brian Danielson has been on a mission to take out every member of the Dark Order. He did so with Evil Uno. He took out Colt Cabana last week in Chicago. And then this Wednesday night, it will be Alan Angels and Brian Danielson in Atlanta, Georgia, as Brian Danielson continues his path to warn Hangman Adam Page in the AEW World Championship. His opponent from Orlando, Florida, weighing 212 pounds, Mike Reed. Yeah, no doubt about it. It's going to be in Alan Angels' hometown tomorrow night of Atlanta, GA. Well, Duluth, Georgia, but right outside of Atlanta, very close. And you saw whose second Angels to the ring was the one, the only negative one on the outside of the ring. Yeah. One of the most dangerous uh, young men in the business today. AEW Dynamite will be live coast to coast tomorrow night, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. In addition to Alan Angels and the American Dragon, Brian Danielson going one-on-one, -on -one, we will also see the Atlanta Street Fight. Andrade, El Idolo versus the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes, another hometown boy. All of that and so much more tomorrow night live on TNT, AEW Dynamite, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Well, right now against Reed, Allen Angels needs to keep doing what he's doing in the early goings and just stick into offense, being aggressive, and get get some uh, some kind of a, a good vibe going into tomorrow night on Dynamite against the very dangerous Brian Danielson. Nice snap suplex by Angels. Low frog splash. Far leg is hooked. Mike Reed able to kick out. And Allen, oh. They see negative one putting on a second second mask, Shades of Mill Maskers. <laughs> I told you to do that. I told you recently here. You need to wear multiple masks. So next thing you know, negative one, he's taking the gimmick I gave you. I told you. <laughs> I don't know why that cracked me up so much. <laughs> it's hilarious. That's why. It's funny, oh, Mike, <laughs> Mike Reed looking for an upset here. Two count. Angel's able to kick out. Yeah, you see him. He's uh, he's not he's not rushing into nothing, which is smart by Reed. You know, he's been around the block a little bit, so he's not rushing into anything. And uh, Alan Angels though holds onto the ropes, throws the boot. Mike Reed. Oh wow! Look at the fluidity of Angels. He was able to use his momentum to escape out to the apron. Caught the high kick on Mike Reed. Now Angels up to the top, dive and cross body. Alan Angels drops Mike Reed, nice drop step, and then the step up NC Gary, Mike Reed on roller skates. Yeah, Reed, either the momentum got him out of the ring or he got knocked out out of the ring. I mean, because that's yeah. smart, he got out of the ring, but now he ate that from Angels. Alan Angels, the tope suicida through the second and third rope. Angels doing the smart thing, returning Reed into the, into the ring immediately. Oh, wild swing and a miss by Angels. Reed. Countered, but Angels countered the counter, and the wing snapper by Allen Angels. Angels, one, two, and three. Here is your winner, Allen Five, Angels. I mean, negative one somehow had a complete gimmick change on the outside of the ring, which I think is awesome. I mean, just wearing this badass vest now. Well, momentum for Angels going in tomorrow night, dude. Another win for Allen Angels and a huge match for him tomorrow night on Dynamite. Here we go, Excalibur. You, look, you have a lot of favorite wrestlers. You, you always text me your favorite wrestlers. I know this lady, Rio Mizunami, is one of your favorites. She's in action right now. This contest is set for a one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching a ring from Nagoya, Japan, and Nikki Ryo Mizunami! Ryo Mizunami, a.k.a. Aniki, the seedling across the sea champion, competing here once again on AEW Dark. And Taz, I, you know, I don't really appreciate you uh, discussing our private text messages and conversations in public. Well, no, it's just between you and I. I just was telling you while we were broadcasting. That's all. No one else. It's just between us. Oh, okay. <laughs> for, some reason, for some reason, I thought yeah. people were watching Dark. Yeah, no, they are. Danny Jordan. Her from, from Long Island, New York. Danny Jordan. Danny Jordan sitting in the corner, raving like. Conda. 
Nevermore. <laughs> that was funny. Uh, Danny Jordan, she's got that burn book. Undoubtedly, Rio Mizunami has her own entry in it. And oh, let me hear this. Let me hear this. Hold on. I would hear this. Oh, look at Yeah, there we see it. Oh. It's the first page, too, Taz. I would. You you really have to dislike somebody to to make them the first page in your your, yes, your book yes. of enemies. I would like to say, speaking of speaking oh. of burn books and dislike, I'd like to make my own burn book and have referee Bryce Remsburg in every page. Wow. Powerful words by Taz here on AEW Dark, getting a real insight into the mind. Oh, cover here by Danny Jordan. And before this match gets too far underway, the final dynamite of the TNT era before we move to TBS in January. Tickets on sale for that event right now, Wednesday, December 29th at Daly's Place in Jacksonville, Florida. Plus, AEW's Battle of the Belts at the Bojangles Coliseum in Charlotte, North Carolina, Saturday, January 8th, 2022. Tickets for both events on sale right now, AEWTIX.com. Wow, big exchange by Danny Jordan, Real uh -oh, Mizunami. Uh -oh, uh -oh. Oh. Explosive chop, very explosive chop. Mizunami like that. Yes. Yeah, real Mizunami. You know, I, uh, you, you know how I am. I don't normally eat in catering with the GP, the general population backstage here. Uh, I hit my own sure. private locker room with Team Taz, but sometimes I do go in there. I was sitting at a table recently in catering in Kansas City with real Mizunami, and we discussed her physicality, these violent chops she has, the intensity of them. I was drinking coffee, and she was just drinking tea like crazy and showing me the chops. It was insane in catering, insane, bro. And we saw Danny Jordan. She was trying to cover up, but real Mizunami kept battering Jordan with chops. And now Anaki charging in the clothesline in the corner. Danny Jordan had nowhere to go. Mizunami. I mean, Tez, I know, I know you were you were joking a little bit, but the physicality of Mizunami is just so tough to counter. She lands that big leg drop. Danny yes. Jordan kicks out. And I never joke, I'm always serious. But yes, that was a, a very intense leg drop, and Mizunami, she's uh, extremely tenacious. Her toughness, she could take, oh, she might be going for a little exploder suplex here, possibly. She's got that high collar in there and a half waist, but Jordan elbowing her way out of it. Yeah, good job by Danny Jordan. And then the jawbreaker, real Mizunami staggered. Oh, no, oh. Mizunami. Oh, God. She was playing possum, caught Danny Jordan with the lariat. And now Danny Jordan up on Mizunami's shoulders. Mizunami. Uh-oh. Oh! She had the leg hooked, hit the power slam, and Mizunami scores the win. No winner of this match. Real Mizunami! Very talented, this lady. She gets it done. She's a tench. She's got a violent streak in her. Rio Mizunami gets it done again. Yeah, the power of Mizunami. So tough to counter. And oh, Bryce Rumsberg with the assist. He's such a and ham. The pose. He's such a ham. <laughs> I hate that guy. <laughs> Big time singles match coming up. The butcher of the Hardy family office. He'll have the bunny. Big Money Matt and George Joel in his corner, and he'll be in action next. This back set for a one four with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Buffalo, New York, weighing 273 pounds, the Butcher. Taz, talk about somebody who's really you know, leaned up, put on a lot of muscle. I mean, the Butcher was always a massive individual, but right now, I mean, he cuts an imposing figure. Yeah, no, he did. He, he definitely must have amped up his cardio or something, changed his nutrition, because he definitely, you people out there, you people, you'll see, oh, once he Whoa. takes that leather vest on, just attack him, my man, right before the guy can even get rolling here. Justin couldn't even, Justin, could, Justin couldn't even announce the other guy's name. You think Justin's upset? Oh, I bet he is. He's, he's livid, just like Michael Martinez is livid that he is getting worked over by the Butcher here. But I don't think Michael Martinez has any say in this matter as the Butcher comes charging in with a running knee strike. And Paul Turner wants no part of the Butcher. Another guy, Paul Turner, the referee, who's very, very shady. I can tell you that from experience. Very shady. But anyway, Martinez able to stop the Butcher with a boot. 
Got the boot up at the clothesline in the corner. Michael Martinez charging in once again, the back elbow. Martinez, Martinez oh. has got some height. He's got to be about 6'4", six, 6'5", six, probably about a, maybe an inch or two shorter than me. I mean, he's got height. But right now he is getting his jaw adjusted by the Butcher, who's just battering Martinez with elbow strikes in the short arm clothesline. That was some shot. Big money, Matt loves it. The bunny loves it. They love violence. They love money. I mean, yeah, it's, you know, similarities to us in Team Taz. The Butcher. Wow. There is your winner, The Butcher. The Butcher quite obviously not getting paid by the second. He made short work of Michael Martinez here tonight on AEW Dark. Impressive. Well, here we go. We got ladies action. Nikita Knight goes up against <laughs> a former national champion, high school cheerleader champion, Julia Hart. Here we go. Two time, two time. <laughs> this contest is set for one fall. For a 20 minute time limit, a French ring from Bloomington, Minnesota, Julia Hart. Julia Hart flying solo here tonight for this big one-on-one -on -one contest on AEW Dark. Julia Hart squaring off with Nikita Knight, and in just a moment, we'll throw it down to the Dapper Yapper, Justin Roberts. How about we do it right now? All right. We're opponent for Pennsylvania, Nikita Knight. Nikita Knight and Julia Hart set to square off, but before they do, I'd like to remind everybody that tomorrow night, AEW Dynamite, will be coming to you from Atlanta, Georgia. Well, the greater Atlanta area in Duluth at the Gath South Arena tomorrow night, December 1st. And then winter is coming, coming up in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, Garland, Texas, at the Curtis Caldwell Center, December 15th. Tickets for both events on sale right now, AEWTIX.com. Well, Nikita, she's got control of that arm, but you see right there, smart by Julia Hart, used the rope to flip out of it and reverse that arm ring. But Nikita Knight grabbing a handful of hair back and Julia Hart up into the ropes. And Julia Hart though charges in, shoulder tackle. Takes yeah, Nikita good Knight. shoulder tackle, yeah. There's good stuff right there, watch out. Whoop. Of the hip toss, reverse. Julia it's, lands the hip toss and the thrust kick as soon as Nikita Knight was standing up. Moonsault pressed by Julia Hart. Oh, Julia opts not to go for the cover. Yeah, Julia, you know, as you know, she's, she's you know, spunky, young athlete for sure, you know, cheerleader, two-time national champion cheerleader. But she's got a mean streak in her, but Nikita Knight showing her mean streak right now. Yeah, Nikita Knight lands that shot across the midsection, a right hand to the ribs of Julia Hart. And, you know, Taz, I, I heard a rumor that... Oh, my oh. God! <laughs> One, two, no! What Nikita. the hell is going on? Oh Damn! Nikita I don't know Knight head, bro. with that Jeez. Mitch and Hoka driver. Gee. What the hell? Jeez Louise. <laughs> that was nasty, thank God. It looks like Julia's okay. But that was a hard and high, nasty landing. Nikita Knight, wild swing and a miss. Julia Hart backs off, rolls through, lands on her feet. Oh, both women think a drop kick. Yeah, both had the same idea. Both ladies are down on the mat. Let's see who gets uh, to their feet first. That person, whoever it is, might have the advantage. Julia Hart struggling to get to her feet. Nikita Knight, you can see, looking over her shoulder, trying to check on Julia's progress as Nikita struggling her way up. And both women vertical and exchanging elbow strikes. Julia Hart hits a series. Heads into the ropes, clothesline. And Nikita Knight gets taken off her feet once again. Julia Hart, wow, just standing over her opponent. And yeah, it's like just clothesline, clothesline to me, eyeball you. Now just taking down Nikita. Oh, Julia Hart, the splitting leg drop. That's a move that I really, I'm pissed I didn't do when I was an active wrestler. Well, yeah, I mean, you, you did it in training. You did it in the Team Taz Dojo. But... <laughs> Julia Hart and springs in, charges, 
running back elbow. Nikita Knight in a lot of trouble here. Julia Hart with the Bulldog. Nikita Knight shrugs her off. Julia, jawbreaker with the split. And now the Bulldog with the spoon once again. Julia Hart covers two, three. Julia Hart continues her winning ways here tonight on AEW Dark. Well, coming up next here on AEW Dark, Ray Jazz goes one on one with the mysterious mask man, Infinito, next. This contest is set for a one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Introducing first, from the infinite universe, from the beginning and end of time, when more than you could possibly imagine, Infinito! Very interesting hometown and body weight for this man, Infinito, making his AEW debut. Yeah, Infinito, almost with a Orange Cassidy-esque ring announcement from Justin Roberts, but Infinito making He's more like, uh, kind of like Kenny Kenny Omega type. A little bit, yeah. His opponent from South Plainfield, New Jersey, weighing 206 pounds, Ray Jazz. Well, Ray Jazz was not too impressed. He saw, uh, saw him give the big wave towards in Infinito, like, ah, this guy's a bum. I don't know, we'll see. I've heard some stuff that this guy's actually pretty good in Infinito. I mean, he's making his debut here. Uh-oh, he's going into a little let's clap it up type thing. Let's get the audience behind me. Something I've never done my whole life, <laughs> ever. Well, I want to remind everybody ever. that AEW Rampage coming up this Friday night, 10, 9 Central on TNT. We will see the TNT Championship on the line as champion Sammy Guevara defends against the premier athlete, Tony Nese, plus best two out of three falls matchup. Lucha Brothers, Ray Fenix, Penta, El Cerro Miedo take on FTR, Dax Harwood, and Cash Wheeler this Friday night, AEW Rampage. Yeah, I can't wait, man. Rampage has been just, we call it basically the, the fastest hour in pro wrestling, because it is. I mean, so ju you just sit down, buckle up, we're gonna take you on a really fast ride, and good control of the wrist and arm right there by Infinito on Ray Jazz. Yeah, Rampage has a tendency to fly by, and Infinito, Seems to have a tendency to work over the arm of Ray Jazz. I believe he said uno mas, which means just one more, I believe, or one more time, or once oh, but Ray more. Jazz countering out, cartwheels out underneath, takes Infinito over the top, and then grabs the hammerlock, or not the hammerlock, top wrist lock, excuse me. Yes. Yes, good job by Ray Jazz, and working on it, I'm leg dropping on the inside of the bicep, left bicep of Infinito, if that is his real name, but now, Jazz controlling that arm. Jazz, I mean, Ray Jazz, that's a smooth name. He should, his entrance music should be jazz music, like something like a Kenny G. I don't think we can clear the rights to a Kenny G test, but Infinito Fair goes for the trip. Fair play. Ray Jazz evades Infinito leapfrog, and the monkey flip to quote a very rich 10-year-old, welcome to hell, Ray Jazz. <laughs> Infinito charging into the corner once again. The monkey flip, sending Ray Jazz nearly all the way across the ring. Tough right there. Jazz landing on his tailbone, man. That hurts when you get you get tossed over in a Tobinagi or a monkey flip. Watch. Let's see if it lands oh. again right on his tailbone on his rear end. That hurts, man, when that happens. Yeah, again, you can see Ray Jazz comes up, clutching his backside, and Infinito, just a flying headbutt. Infinito is uh, very impressive. I mean, uh, I wonder if he lives in the same. Oh, look at that cross by. That's well, it wasn't a cross by. That same complex that you live in, along with Super Suplex Machine, Super Strong Suplex Machine, Infinito, uh, Serpentico. All you guys, you all live in that. Does he live there, Infinito? Uh, I'm, I've never seen him around the the community pool, but right. that doesn't mean that uh, you know he's he's not nocturnal. He could swim at night, for all I know. It could be. Well, I know the super strong suplex machine moved. He's in that development, but in the cul-de-sac area. So that's maybe where Infinito is. And look at this. Infinito going for the infinite airplane spin. He's got Ray Jazz. A lot of rotations. Yep, up on the These shoulder. These are called rotations. Excalibur, they're called rotations, my friend. 
They, he is rotating his heart out as Infinito. Oh my God, I'm getting dizzy over yeah. here. I might throw up on you, bro. I think I'm going to vomit on you. <laughs> uh, and Infinito just keeps going and going and going like his name. And Wow, Ray Jazz is going to pass out. Or oh, puke. Oh, no. Infinito, the roll up and the win. I, I don't, I mean, no reason at all for Infinito to still be standing. I don't even know how the guy's standing after all those rotations. He just spun Ray Jazz around at least 30 something times and then just rolled him up. But impressive debut by Infinito. Infinito with the airplane spin, scoring the victory in his AEW debut here tonight. Here we go, we got ladies action right now. Layla Hirsch, the legit Layla Hirsch, gonna have at it against Sahara Seven right about now. This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Hillsborough, New Jersey, legit Layla Hirsch. Great to see legit Layla Hirsch back in action here tonight on AEW Dark. However, she's gonna have her work cut out for her against this woman. Let's throw it back down to Justin. Her opponent from Cairo, Egypt, Sahara Seven. Big time matchup here in the women's division. And speaking of big time matchups, tomorrow night on Dynamite, the final, quarterfinal round matchup of the TBS Championship Tournament. Chris Statlander and Ruby Soho go one on one with the winner advancing to face Nyla Rose in the semifinal round. Plus, undefeated tag teams, the Gun Club, Billy and Colton Gunn, take on Sting and Darby Allen. All of that and so much more tomorrow night, live, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, AEW Dynamite on TNT. Yeah, Dynamite's gonna be great tomorrow night, right, side of, right outside of Hot Lena. And these two ladies here are really just pounding on each other in the chest and up in the shoulder griddle area. Sahara Seven gouged the eyes of Layla Hirsch and then caught an elbow when Layla couldn't see it coming. The hammer throw across the ring, the splash in the corner. Layla Hirsch in a spot of trouble here as Sahara Seven imposing her will, using her size advantage. Oh, but Layla kick it out. Yeah, no doubt. Seven really driving her hard on that side slam, and Hirsch seems to be in a little bit of trouble right now. Let's see if she can bounce back. Layla ducks under the clothesline and brings Sahara down. Had the, the shoulder captured and the, the leg hooked. Nice drop step by Layla Hirsch. German suplex plants Sahara Seven. Yeah, she released it, then a running knee strike really hit its mark. That was excellent by Hirsch. Layla Hirsch just sits back in on the Juji Gatami and Sahara Seven immediately taps out. Yeah, you know, once you get that bicep extended, I don't care if you're a male or female, with that Juji Gatami, you gotta tap out, and that's exactly what Hirsch had Seven do. Tag team action coming up next here on AEW Dark. Aaron Solo and Nick Camarado of the Factory take on Brian Pillman Jr. and Griff Garrison, the Varsity Blondes. This is a tag team contest set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring at a combined weight of 485 pounds, Aaron Solo and Nick Camarado. The Factory Solo and Camarado. Such a complimentary tag team, Taz. You got the power of Camarado. You got the speed and agility of Solo. Really a formidable duo. Yeah, yeah, but they're gonna go against, I mean, obviously they're part of the factory, but they're gonna go against a, a really good young tag team in the Varsity Blondes here, who have a lot of cohesiveness. So this should be a really good match. And their opponents being accompanied by Julia Hart at a combined weight of 453 pounds. Griff Garrison, Brian Pillman Jr., the Varsity Bronze. Julia Hart victorious earlier tonight here on AEW Dark. Great to see her still walking. 
Yeah, that Michinooka, Michinooka driver she took was nasty, but she was victorious. Not only walking, but yeah, the Marcy Blondes right there. What the cheerleader herself. There it is right there. That's full effect, Marcy Blondes, ladies and gentlemen. If you're new to Dark or AW. I love saying it. I just love saying it. I know you do. It's great. Uh, well, yeah, well said. The, the factory, the, uh, the, the training facility of QT Marshall is in, actually just outside of Atlanta, Georgia. And you know what's also just outside of Atlanta, Georgia? Dynamite. Has. I think you're going to say dynamite. I think so. It's a, basically a Segway plug. Yep. Duluth, Georgia, the Gas South yep. Arena, AEW Dynamite live tomorrow night. 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, live coast to coast on TNT. It will be the Atlanta Street Fight. Andrade El Idolo, Brian Pillman, trying to make a quick cover here. Andrade El Idolo and Cody Rhodes in the Atlanta Street Fight. Andrade hit that uh, that shadow, that hammerlock DDT on the exposed concrete last week on Cody Rhodes, leading to this Atlanta Street Fight. Plus, the American Dragon Brian Danielson continues his quest towards Hangman Adam Page, the AEW World Championship. Danielson will take on Allen Angels, number five of the Dark Order tomorrow night in Atlanta, Georgia. Georgia, Allen Angels, hometown. And you see right there, nice up and over by Pillman. Goes behind Solo, and here comes Griff Garrison, the legal man. Yeah, Griff Garrison got the blind tag. Brian Pillman with the neck breaker. Garrison with the leg drop. Transitions over, hooked a far leg, just got a two count though. Yeah, Garrison, uh, Griff thought he would, got the win right there, but he quickly gets on himself, gets himself a rear chin lock, which is uh, smart to control Solo. Solo, a very accomplished veteran uh, amongst the world of professional wrestling. He's done well here in AEW. Being with the factory, I think, is a big plus for him. Anytime you're around Absolutely. someone like a Q, uh, please, sir, I'm talking. Anytime you're around someone like a QT Marshall, it's a great thing in my opinion. Now you can speak, sir. Here we go. <laughs> All right, thank you, Tess. Uh, the tag is made. Brian Pillman Jr. Now the legal man for the Varsity Blondes. Pillman, the drop kick, spinebuster combo from the Blondes. That was a good. That was good height. That was good height right there in that drop kick, dude, by Pillman. Pillman, the cover, just a one count on Solo. At the top of the match, Taz, we talked about what a great duo Camarado and Solo are. Pillman Jr. and Griff Garrison, they've really accomplished a lot in the past 12 months here in AEW, from two men that had never tagged before to a very cohesive and a top-ranked tag team here in AEW. They've, they've been in the top five multiple occasions. They've even challenged for the AEW World Tag Team Championship, the Varsity Blondes. You know, I alluded to that at the top of uh, Varsity Blondes' entrance just a lot quicker than you. But the thing <laughs> is, the thing is, you are correct, sir, in all those things, Excalibur. The Varsity Blondes have definitely done a, an excellent job in the ta ta tag team ranks here in AEW. Right now, though, Pilt was in trouble. Uh-oh, and so was Solo because he got slapped by Oh, you know who? Julia Hart paintbrushing Aaron Solo. Camarado swinging a miss. Pillman flies through the ropes with a drop kick. Very nearly flew into the front row here at AEW Universal. Oh, but Camarado charges in, gets guillotined over the top rope. He's got a Pillman chant right here. So oh, maybe going there. Pillman, no. Solo, and there's that that veterancy of Aaron Solo, that experience as he knew that Pillman was, was fixing to fly and Solo cut Pillman off. Yeah, short sure thing, and now you see Solo just in hot pursuit, staying all over Pillman, cutting the ring in half, keeping his back to Griff Garrison so Pillman can't get to him. Snap suplex by Aaron Solo, lateral press, barely a two count from referee Rick Knox. Well, Taz, how do you feel about Rick Knox? Uh, I'm indifferent about him. Okay. One time I was at I was at a steak I was at a steakhouse in Minneapolis. I was sitting at the bar, just pounding like three T-bone steaks and a fillet and a bunch of mashed broccoli and drinking tons of scotch. And he was sitting right next to me and he kept talking. To me. I go, bro, who are you? Was I'm Rick Knox, referee? He goes, oh, sorry. I, I go, I, I, I'm sorry. I didn't know. Hi, Rick. Taz. Because, bro, we met. So, you know. Lateral press by Camarado. Wow, so you guys have been co-workers for, I mean, almost uh, two years at least, and you just just met at, uh, in Minneapolis a couple weeks ago? Yeah, at the bars, I was eating tons of red meat. But the thing is, like, I 
don't really play nice with the referees. I don't like any of them. I didn't know who he was. Um, but I then knew, because I know he has a famous name, Rick Knox, the referee. I, I, and I knew. I looked at his face. Oh! So you, rec realized, you recognize the yes. name, but not the face. Yes, because he's famous. He's famous. He's done so many great things as a referee here in AEW. And he's a nice person. I just didn't know. So, you know. I'm, I'm in my own auto. world, bro. You know that. I'm in my own world, uh, man. It's all about me. You heard Jericho on Rampage say, it's not always about you, Taz. You know, I'm not like him. Like Chris, Chris is always about everybody else. I'm, you know, more self-centered. <laughs> Excuse me. Did that actually make air, or was that Oof. a Wildland Jones? Oh, Camarado spills to the outside. I don't know. Brian Pillman Jr. with the opportunity here, and I may have broken Taz. <laughs> Pillman uh, gets, gets the up kicks, knocks Solo back to the corner. Griff Garrison, the legal man for the blondes. Big Griff Garrison. Rangy, athletic, strong competitor with those clotheslines on Solo. A nasty Garrison looking good here. Garrison cleaning house. The tilt a world backbreaker by Griff Garrison. Griff definitely looking good here. Solo, man. Solo's got to try to do something, move out of the way or something. Oh, maybe not. Yeah, Garrison lands that splash in the corner. The high boot turns Solo inside out. And Garrison. Plant Solo, center of the ring. Far leg is hooked. Two, no. Solo able to kick out. Good job by referee Rick Knox right there. One of the best in the business. And now you see Garrison trying to get fired up. There's Julia Hart. She's slightly concerned. She's banging on the mat, trying to get the people behind. Yes, can I help you? Yes. How many grams of protein is in three T-bones in a, in a filet? Um, 76 grams. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Wow. What a spare by Camarado, and what a miscalculation by Taz. Yes, <laughs> he almost split Garrison in half with that spear. Bro, I had like a full 24 ounce glass of Woodford, just pounded <laughs> with the steak. That's it, Camarado said it's over. Camarado looking for that gorilla press. He's got Garrison up. Oh, Garrison uh -oh. escapes. Rolls Camarado up. Camarado. Oh, nice job. Good tag. Out, but good, good tag there, dude. Good yeah. tag. Garrison used the momentum created by Camarado to get the tag out to Pillman Jr. Pillman lands a couple kicks on the jaw of Camarado. Camarado covers. Pillman goes over the top. Sunset flip. Uh oh. No. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Rolling elbow strike into the sunset flip. Two, three. Wow. Well, Excalibur, that tag team contest obviously could have went either way, but it went the way to Varsity Blondes. But great job by both teams. Yeah, tremendous teamwork shown by the Varsity Blondes. Let's take another look at this. Pillman fakes with the thrust kick to the jaw. Camarado ducked and covered, but Griff Garrison hits this big rolling elbow strike. Another big win for the Varsity Blondes. How about that? And a big 2021 for these two, Griff Garrison, Brian Pillman Jr., and of course, Julia Hart, two-time national champ. Let's talk about what they did in 2021, main eventing Dynamite, main eventing Rampage, all the way to the top of the rankings in the tag team division. I'm sure as we move forward, gold is on your mind. Oh, heck yeah, Tony. Gold is for sure on our minds, baby. And that match was just a stepping stone to prove why we are one of the best tag teams in AEW and why we will have gold around our waist in the very near future. Take a good hard look. Look at us, look what we've been through. Everything from Julia being harassed every match, from scoring toe to toe with FTR and the Young Bucks. We've been through it all. And if those guys are the future, then we're the now of professional wrestling. Come on, Steve Blondes with another win here on Dark. Well, here we go. The premier athlete, Tony Nese, is in action. Hey, we might be looking at the next TNT champion come Rampage if he beats Gravala. He's up right now. Yes, but it's a 
for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Long Island, New York, weighing 224 pounds, Tony Nice. Taz, a lot of buzz around this man, the premier athlete, Tony Nice. He will receive his first shot at a championship here in AEW this Friday night, as you mentioned, on Rampage. Part of the quickest 60 minutes in all of professional wrestling. You see the abdomen reach and the abs of Nice. Reminds me of a young Taz back in the early 90s. But you covered it up yeah. just for modesty. Absolutely. From Chicago, Illinois, weighing 235 pounds, Team Marcio, James. Yeah, Singlet Jones. I didn't want to like make the other guys lock him look bad, but enough about me. Let's talk about Tony Nice. I can't wait till this this Friday on Rampage and watch him and Guevara lock horns. I don't like Sammy Guevara. I don't like him at all. Okay, so I'd like to see Nice become the new TNT champion. Taz undoubtedly not a part of the vlog crew, but also coming up this Friday night on Rampage 10, 9 Central on TNT. The Lucha Brothers versus FTR, a best two out of three falls matchup. We've seen these teams collide here twice over the last few months here in AEW. They've split a pair of victories each. Who will come out of Rampage the winner in the best two out of three falls matchup? Tony Nice got you that see, shot. Nice saying that you're, yeah, he's telling this young man, you're in my ring, you belong in my ring. And how quick the premier athlete right there just shut this young guy down. Tony Nice going over the top rope, using the rope as a weapon, hits the splash. Far leg is hooked to Marcio James, kick it out at one. Tony Nice makes it look easy. Makes it look easy. Talking a lot of trash right there. Just catch him a little cross face real quick right there. Yeah, Tony, Tony Nice represents maybe the biggest challenge of Sammy Guevara's TNT Championship reign. I think that's a that's a pretty fair uh, assessment. And, you know, because Tony Nice, not unknown in pro wrestling, but still fairly new here in AEW. So, and you saw that left-handed chop right there, right across the chest. You don't see many guys do it left. Whoa! Hard shot into the buckle there for Demarcio James, Tony Nice. Just exploding James into the buckle. And of course, Sammy Guevara, his uh, his most recent defense of the TNT Championship came as the, uh, the, the open challenge was answered by Jay Lethal. Sammy Guevara won, but just barely. And it was a really physical matchup, Taz. So, you know, who knows what shape Guevara is gonna be in this Friday night on Rampage. Yeah, that's a good point, Excalibur. And the thing is, when you have that TNT championship, or any championship for that matter, you got to be able to take on all comers. And I got to give Sammy credit. He takes on anybody coming at him. All these new athletes coming in here, especially here, the premier athlete who just got drop kicked. That was a nice drop kick there. Yeah, great, great drop kick by Demarcio oh. James. Great accuracy. Kick to the midsection. He doubles Nice over. The scissor kick avoided Nice. Pulls James into the waist lock and a German suplex into the turnbuckles. And We're now seeing Tony that, watch this, the good speed, good quickness right there by Nice. And the running Nice collides with the jaw of James and Tony Nice is victorious. The this match, Tony Nice. Well, he's definitely ready for Guevara. He's showing the AEW roster, especially the TNT champion, Sammy Guevara, Hey, I am not one guy to mess around with here. I am the premier athlete. I am Tony Nese. That's a single bicep shot right there. Tag team action coming up next here on AEW Dark. The Hardy family offices, George Joel, and of course, Big Money Matt in action next. This is a tag team contest set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Making their way to the ring at a combined weight of 450 pounds, the team of George Joel and Matt Hardy. As if you remember a few months ago, Matt Hardy was building out the ranks of the HFO. He told, he told George Joel, I can make you a star here in AEW. All it'll take is just 30% of, uh, of your revenue. And uh, 
so far, I think Matt Hardy has seen a big windfall, but George Jolt maybe still waiting for his. Well, you got to be patient. I, Matt Hardy and I are friends for a lot of years. 30% is a pretty unfair vig, I get that. But it takes time to be successful. And their opponents, the team of Baron Black and Prince Agabala. Prince Agabala and Baron Black making their tag team debut here in AEW. Baron Black, of course, regular viewers of AEW Dark, very familiar with. He's an extremely capable athlete. We'll see what his synergy with Prince Agabala is like here tonight in tag team action. Starting off with Baron Black and Jorah Joel. That's Jorah Joel, if you're new to our Fantastic. programming, that's Jorah Joel. Joel in the purple trunks and purple knee pads. Uh, I digress, thanks, Calvi. Yes, can I help you? I, I was going to say, speaking of partners, what about our partner, Tony Schiavone? Oh, he's, what do you mean? What's the, what happened to him now? I heard all these rumors. <laughs> well, I was going to say, his his new book, his new graphic novel, Butts and Seats, just came out, and you can get it on Amazon or at your friendly local comic book store, Tony Schiavone's Journey Through the World of Professional Wrestling, Butts and Seats, available now. Well, does he put me over in the book? Uh, no. I don't know. I haven't read it yet. All right. Well, me neither. All right, here we go. But I heard it's a great read, though. All kidding aside, it's great. Yeah, well, look at this backslide here. Yeah, Tony Schiavone put a lot of work into the book. I know he did. And he did put a lot of work into it. Look, I don't like Schiavone. He certainly did. But he did put a lot of work into it, and it's probably awesome. So, I mean, and I'm, I'm only looking for success for Tony. Manhattan drop exploder combo there by Baron Black. Taking George Joel over the top. And big money, Matt Hardy on the apron. Big, the big prince is in Marcus here now, the big prince. Yeah, Prince Agabala sends George Joel over the corner. George Joel, not a small man. No. And Agabala able to just power, outpower him. Yeah, interesting offense by the prince. In, out, corner, back out. Baron Black back in now. Ooh, headbutt to the chin by Jorah Joel and a belly-to-belly -belly suplex sends Baron Black into the HFO's corner. Well, Matt Hardy just basically coaching up Jorah Joel. Jorah Joel showing some intensity here and now making the tag out to Big Money Matt. Oh, okay. Jorah. <laughs> was instructed to come back in the ring and hold Baron Black open for Big Money Matt's elbow across the spine. Yeah, Baron Black is in trouble now dealing with Big Money Matt. He, uh, Matt Hardy, a ring general for a lot of years. No matter if it's singles matches, tag team matches, this guy it was uh, draped in championships for the bulk of his career. Yeah, Matt, Big Money Matt Hardy, one of the most savviest veterans, or one of the savviest veterans here in the AEW locker room, one of the most dedicated tag team wrestlers of all time, as you mentioned, Taz. And George Joel lands a massive power slam. Two, no. Baron no, so Black able to kick out. Matt Hardy, a great leader of the, the HFO, the Hardy family office. So just a great, great leader. They have great synergy with us and Team Taz also. I work well with uh, many of these other people who have these groups and teams. Except for Chris oh. Jericho. I don't really deal with Jericho that much. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Backstabber by Baron Black. George Joel in a lot of trouble here. Matt Hardy coming in, grabbing the boot of Baron Black. Baron with the up kick, sends Matt Hardy to the outside. Prince Agabala is now the legal man for his team. Explodes into the ropes. Spinning lariat takes George Joel down. Matt Hardy doesn't want any part of the Prince, and that allowed George Joel to land the blindside shot to the side of the head. Yeah, the Prince kept his eye off his opponent a little bit too long, and George Joel made him pay for it. Oh, my God, he right on his face. What the oh. hell just happened there? Oh, Lordy B. My man, Prince, Prince Agabala, <laughs> leaving the paint on the canvas here as George Joel sizing the big man up. Prince Agabala struggling to his feet, George. Joel, the high boot across the jaw. Matt Hardy wants to be tagged in, just so you know. And he is tagged in. Jorah Joel doing all the hard work. I think he and might go for the twist Matt of fate. Hardy I gonna... think he's going for the twist of fate. And why shouldn't Jorah Joel do the hard work? Matt Hardy's the boss. He's paying 
Well, he's taken some of the man's pay, so yes, he's the boss, though, Matt Hardy. Twist of fate by big money, Matt Hardy. The leg is hooked, and the win for the HFO. George, George, at well, George Joel did all the work, and he's going to come home with 70% of the pay from this victory here tonight on AEW Dark. George Joel had that like kind of a mild clap. He should be a little bit more happy sharing the ring with Matt Hardy. All right, here we go. Big match right here. Ethan Page is going to go head up against Fuego Do Sol. I'll tell you what, Excalibur, I don't like the match man's chances. I'm just giving predictions. Here's Barry Sipporo and Paul with a 20 minute time limit, making his way to the ring from Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Weighing 225 pounds, all ego, Ethan Page. All ego, Ethan Page, in a very, very impressive win loss record. Coming into this match with a chip on his shoulder against Fuego del Sol. Not because of anything Fuego did. Well, I, actually, Fuego's a pretty unlikable fella. But uh, because of yeah. Fuego's... Well, I know I know why I know why you, you don't like Fuego. I know why. I read it online. because he wears a mask. You wear a mask. It's, it's hood heat. Hood heat. Well, but I'm, I'm on great terms with Evil Uno. So, you know, it's, it's not just the mask. It's because Fuego del Sol is associated with the vlog crew, who I understand you, Taz, have oh. your own issues with. I hate them. Hate them. From Mobile, Alabama, weighing 176 pounds, Fuego del Sol. So let me get this straight. Am I looking at things the proper way here? Fuego del Sol has his own T-shirt now here in AEW. Yes, and you can get it right now at shopaew.com. In fact, you can shop the entire. AEW collection at shopaew.com makes a great gift this holiday season. I will say the design of that shirt was, ooh, was cool looking. So was that kick right to the face. Yeah, I boot across the... <laughs> of uh, Fuego. Yeah, I boot across the jaw of Fuego del Sol, courtesy of All Ego Ethan Page, and he follows it up with a massive right hand. And Ethan Page just sending Fuego to the outside. Tez, one thing I've never noticed is that in Fuego Del Sol's entrance video, it actually shows him hugging Sammy Guevara. Oh, it's obnoxious. It's totally obnoxious. Look at this, look at this. Oh, right on the throat. It's totally obnoxious. The love fest, the buddy ship, the buddy fest, whatever the hell you want to freaking call it, between Sammy and Fuego and Alan Angels, it makes me want to puke. I believe the word you were looking for was friendship, but buddy ship also works. Yes, yes. And all ego, Ethan Page, given the crowd here at AEW Universal an earful, but he just got a face full of Fuego Del Sol's boot, and now Fuego launching off the stage, oh. lands on his feet. That was impressive, very impressive by Fuego. You know, back in my day, I love starting senses like that. <laughs> Oof. When I was wrestling, there was no, there was no, uh, there was no vlogs and oh, no social media. Good job by Fuego with that drop kick. These, a lot of these guys are getting over with the audience with these vlogs, which and they also have, I have a lot of talent in the ring. But the vlogs are important. I get it. But in my day, I got over by winning something called championships, brother. Look at that moonsault! Well, Fuego del Sol, incredible moonsault. He has lit this crowd at AEW Universal on fire, so to speak. And Ethan Page finding himself in a very hard way on the outside. That's how I got over, buddy. Tornado DDT! Oh! Oof. Ethan Page able to avoid it and pancakes Fuego on the floor. I'm waiting for the rebuttal, the Excalibur rebuttal. The no, Taz, no, this is not the way it is. It's different than, I'm waiting for some negativity from you. Where is oh, it? Oh, no, I think, you, I think everybody should be trying to become world champion, no matter what. That a boy. Oh, and Ethan Page, oh. the backbreaker. That's nasty, that backbreaker by Ethan Page. It'll really shock your spine. Kind of like a Tiger Driver 98. Or perhaps a high collar suplex. <laughs> I guess so, yeah. <laughs> so, yes, sir. Fuego del Sol returned to the ring, all ego. Ethan Page taking his time. 
Yeah, and he can right now. As you know, he's got a size advantage on Fuego. He has an experience advantage on Fuego. So, and he don't have to wear a mask to hide his ugly face like most masked men except a super strong suplex machine. No, very handsome individual. As Sorry. the hammer throw sends yeah. Fuego across the ring into the turnbuckles. Very rough landing for Fuego Del Sol. A little mocking, I love, I love that kind of mocking. All ego, Ethan Page pouring it on here. And while we have... Where's his buddy there, Fuego Dos? Uh, where's, do, where's the Dos, the Deuce? Oh, I'm not Where sure, I don't actually uh, keep track of Fuego Dos. Uh, I sh maybe <laughs> should put one of those uh, GPS chips around his collar like people do with their dogs. <laughs> Fuego Del Sol <laughs> comes off uh. the ropes, lands on his feet. Goes behind, Ethan Page rolls him up, two count. Justin, two count. I think you, oh, look at that close. I think you, you were gonna promote something, I'm pretty sure. A, few, a minute went by, so it's probably time. <laughs> well, that's true. I was gonna say, you can join us this holiday season for our debut at the beautiful new UBS Arena at Belmont Park Wednesday, December 8th. Next Wednesday, December 8th on Long Island, and then the TBS era of AEW Dynamite begins in New Jersey. Wednesday, January 5th at the Prudential Center in Newark, New Jersey. Tickets for both events on sale right now, AEWTIX.com and Ticketmaster.com. Taz, I'm just trying to keep the lights on here. I hear, I hear you, brother. Without you and that S on your chest, we wouldn't survive. But, <laughs> so, <laughs> so now we see this reverse gut wrench, this waist lock tightened up, old school hold that always works right across the sternum. Fuego's in grave pain here as Ethan Page is hanging on. Yeah, Ethan Page hanging on tight. Fuego trying to fire in some back elbows. The third time was the charm. Ethan Page loosens the grip, but reverses Fuego into the ropes. Fuego, back body drop. Comes down hard on that spine that Ethan Page was working over earlier, Taz. You are correct. It's good strategy, right? I mean, work on the middle of the back and the lower back area, and that's what Page is doing. And you see Fuego just hurting right now. I like seeing Fuego hurting. I mean, who doesn't? I mean, I, I think maybe maybe the Mobile, Alabama Chamber of Commerce, you know, is Fuego being their unofficial town mascot, but Ethan Page does not care for municipal government's feelings about their favorite or second favorite professional wrestler. Ethan Page has a vlog, too. He does the, to the toy gimmick. He does a lot of stuff. He's a very successful But man. you know what, Taz? He doesn't bother you with his vlog stuff. No, he doesn't. He doesn't, that's true but he just cut off Fuego Del Sol, that knee to the midsection, and now... No, he, he doesn't try to use my likeness to gain money like some other people around here do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, I know what you're they talking tried about. to do, and I shut them Ethan down. Ethan Page looking for Ego's yeah, edge. <laughs> Once again, cut, trying to focus on the spine of Fuego, but Fuego counters the work on Rana. Takes Ethan Page down. Well, Fuego, he's got a lot of fight. As you know, Fuego's got a lot of fight. Oh, he's going for that Tornado DDT, but he got countered. Well, blocked, I should say. Swing and a miss by Ethan Page. Waist lock by Fuego, but Ethan Page, powerful back elbows, rocking the jaw. Fuego Del Sol, another swing and a miss. Fuego, the moonsault, takes down Ethan Page, kick to the side of the head. Uh oh. And now Fuego launches off the back, double foot stops to the back of the head. This could be an upset, too. No. Yeah, that's a whiplash like deal when a guy stomps right on the back of your head while he's standing on top of your middle of your back. He called for it again. You just saw Fuego. He called for it. The uh, the gimmick's name is Fernand Burnham DDT Tornado. Tornado DDT could be coming up from Fuego Del Sol. He climbs to the top. Ethan Page very unsteady, and Fuego dives in. Ethan Page avoids contact, and oh, what a power slam! Ethan Page far leg hooked. No. Man, I'll tell you this, Fuego Del Sol. He won't go away in this match. He's hanging on. He's hanging on tough. Do you Extremely. and Fuego buy your mask from the same spot online, like on the internet? <laughs> no? All right, I'm just wondering. <laughs> Fuego up on the shoulder of Ethan Page. Escapes out of the ego's edge once again. Ethan Page, the pump kick avoided by Fuego. Fuego! And Zigiri, he's got Ethan Page tied up in the ropes. Oh, that's a tough spot where Ethan Page is sitting on top of that top rope. And Fuego, once again, the foot stop, this time with Ethan Page hung up in the ropes. Big, big upset, big upset. 
to no. Ethan Page able to kick out. Fuego, he can't afford to, to be frustrated with this. He needs to keep the pressure on a competitor like Ethan Page. Oh, yeah, no, for sure. I mean, that was so close, too. And now you just got to stick to your point. Just stay, just stay in the zone here. Like, if you're Fuego here, he's got something up his sleeve. Fuego, the kick to the face of Ethan Page, now headed up top. Fuego looking for one big last shot on all ego. Ethan Page, maybe thinking Super Hurk on him, or maybe Spanish Fly. No, Ethan Page, wow, the power of Ethan Page. Just a body slam off the top rope. Nothing fancy about it, but highly effective. And then the shoulder tackle. Yeah, he just chucked Fuego like he was a big bag of recyclables. And Ethan Page with Fuego Del Sol up on the shoulders. This could be it, the Ego's Edge. Ethan Page covers two and three. Excellent job right there. I'm sure his buddy Scorpio Sky is watching and very happy with the win. After Ethan Page hit that shoulder tackle on Sammy Guevara, he put him on top, not this time, on Fuego. He scores the win with the Ego's Edge. Main event time here on AEW Dark. Anthony Green called out Adam Cole last week here on Dark. The two will finally collide here tonight. Your main event is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Danger Town, USA, weighing 230 pounds, Anthony Green. Taz, in a short time here in AEW, Anthony Green has made a bit of an impact here, and now he's got a huge chance ahead of him here tonight against one of the top stars in AEW, Adam Cole. Yeah, dude, I gotta tell you, I, I like what, what I like what Anthony Green did here, what he's doing here, I should say, calling out, you know, a, a big level, high level star here in AEW, like I, Adam Cole. We wanna talk about somebody that's made an impact here. His from Panama City, Florida. Weighing 202 pounds, Adam. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. Oh, oh what was that? I was a little, early, a little late, a little, a little something. <laughs> That's all right, Tess. I was going to say, since Adam Cole arrived in AEW back at All Out in September, he has been a major player in the upper tier of AEW. He really has. I mean, uh, you know, the guy has wrestled high-level main event matches all over the world. So he is, as advertised, a big fan of this guy's work, his athleticism, his swagger. Hold on a second, hang on, I love this part right here, ready? AEWTIX.com. Neither Anthony Green or Adam Cole really rushing into this. It's a collar and elbow tie up here, center of the ring. Well, you know, Anthony Green. Adam Cole back and Green up to Anthony the corner. Green, kind of a uh, quasi flamboyant fella. He's kind of dressed like. Shh. Oh, I didn't expect that one, but okay, I've seen him do that before out of the corner. Uh, Anthony Green right there, kind of like uh, Sonny. 
He's dressed like Sonny. He's got the mustache. You remember Sonny? Sonny Bono. Yeah, of Sonny and Cher. Very good. Very good, Excalibur. Yes. <laughs> For a second, I thought you were talking about somebody else. Man, there's a lot Adam of Adam Cole, Cole shout-outs, babies. I mean, there's a whole plethora of them in this match. Oh, drop kick. Adam Cole hung on and just a boot across the jaw for Anthony Green. Nothing fancy there, baby. And you know, Tess, Adam Cole doing all this posturing, the posing, reminds me of somebody else who said, he, somebody actually that you knew pretty well that said he had no gimmicks needed. <laughs> yeah, Chris Candido, late great Chris Candido, that's a great point. He, he, Chris was all no gimmicks needed, but he was a complete gimmick. He'd be the first to tell you. I miss him. He was a great guy. I love him. He was awesome. But I could see some similarities in the in ring swagger. Here we go again. Oh my God. Wow, man, he's really, he's really <laughs> hammering it hard. Look at the steady diet here. <laughs> Holy cow. But Anthony Green right there with the drop kick. Sends Cole spilled to the outside. Anthony Green, his eyes locked on Cole. Another drop kick. Sends Adam Cole to the outside once again. And Anthony Green, oh. Yeah. The Adam Cole t-shirt. Yeah, because Adam Cole has get yeah, yours. Yeah, yeah, see? See? See what's going on As here? You, see, you can get yours at shopaew.com. Makes a great holiday gift. Plug Jones. <laughs> see that? I love that. I thought he was going to throw it over here towards us. I, I would have caught it and sold it on eBay. Or, yeah, I mean, just, you got to Am I allowed to gotta pay for the smoke shack somehow? <laughs> hey, man, that thing was not cheap. <laughs> so, <laughs> there's real leather furniture in there, bro. That's not no pleather. <laughs> I know, those, those air filters, those aren't, those aren't cheap either. No, buddy, I don't, I don't play games. Oh, Anthony Green. Here we go. Per pursuing Adam Cole on the floor. Comes in the ring, blocks the right hand by Adam Cole. Adam Cole lands the pump kick. Yeah, that, that definitely stopped Anthony Green's Anthony Green dead in his tracks with his crazy 1975 Sonny Bono slacks on. Slacks, I say. Slacks. Anthony Green's uh, slacks remind me of uh, if there was a small explosion inside a thrift store. That's what you would end up with. And Anthony Green, a small explosion as his head was driven into the ring post. Yeah, no, you're right. It was almost an explosion of his faux head. Not forehead, faux. It's actually called the faux head. Adam Cole's not done. He broke the count for those people, those wrestling purists out there that play by the rules. Still looking for this rule book in pro wrestling, by the way. The referees keep it in their locker room, and it's under, under lock and key. They're the only ones that have seen it. Well, if you ask referee Bryce Rem Remsburg, he'll tell you he wrote the damn book. That guy. Too much. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, this, is, this has been a really, really an anti-Bryce program here tonight. <laughs> He's not even referring a match. I'm burying him. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Paul Turner, our senior official here, watching Adam Coulson, Anthony Green, hard into the, uh, the opposing buckle. Look at the poise of Adam Cole. Adam Cole. Yeah, see, he said you wanted this, you asked for this, now I'm whooping your ass. I love it. The knee right between the shoulder blades, and Adam Cole grabs the headlock, really wrenching on the neck of Anthony Green. Nobody's gonna cheer for you. <laughs> wow, just a, yeah. a, a, a physical and a, an emotional <laughs> beating courtesy of Adam Cole. Sometimes that hurts emotionally during a match, deeply. Green breaks free of the grip of Adam Cole, lands an elbow strike, hits the ropes, and Adam Cole cuts him off, big back elbow. A running back elbow, well placed. And you know, Adam Cole, he's not running around here at 260, 250 pounds but he brings a lot of explosivity in his movements. What you saw right there with that running back elbow, quick little sudden burst are important. Adam Cole, you know, we, we've seen him over the last few weeks. Oh, Anthony Green lands a shot to the midsection. But, oh, Ooh, nice shot. Right hand by Anthony Green. Oh, Cole takes Green off his feet. Well, Adam Cole wants to make this a fist Green. fight. He wants a fist fight here. Yeah, but Green not backing down, Ooh. up to his feet once again. And he's got Adam Cole very unsteady. The boots in the corner, Anthony Green firing up. Yeah, he got motivated by the disrespectful tones of Adam Cole. Clothesline, back elbow from Green. Green ducks on clothesline, jawbreaker, nope. and then a neck breaker. Anthony Green looking sharp here. Green hits the ropes, Cole 
up on the shoulders. Oh! Just planted Green. The hook, no! Green able to kick out. Yeah, I thought he was going to get it right there. I think Adam Cole thought he might have got, got the victory there, but then realized, all right, you kicked out of it. Now I got to amp it up a little bit. You know, a few minutes ago, I was going to mention that uh, Adam Cole primarily over the last few weeks, we've seen him compete in tag team matches with Bobby Fish. So, you know, maybe Cole's instincts are a little, uh, little tag team oriented tonight, but he is waiting for Green to get up to his feet so he can land maybe a super kick, maybe something else. I think that's what he's fixing to do is the old super duper kick. Whoa, oh, there it is. Oh, oh, oh. Just cracked the jaw of Anthony Green. Adam Cole. It's like him and a ref are doing a podcast. Yeah, instead of finishing off Anthony Green there, he's oh. going to hit the podcast sunrise, or I mean the Panama <laughs> sunrise. <laughs> he's going to hit it for sure. That, that was funny what you said. This ain't not going to be funny for Green. Oh, wait a minute. Whoa. Green avoids it and lands a oh. shot of his own. He dropped Adam Cole. This is going to be an upset. Upset. Two. No. Good gosh, it's close. Michinoku Ooh. driver from Green, two, no! Imagine, just imagine if Green gets a victory in this thing. People are like, there's no way it's gonna happen. You never know. You never know. That would be a tremendous upset for Anthony Green, perhaps a star-making performance here. About to unfold, Green. He's got Adam Cole, or Adam Cole and Green were fighting. Nice drop step behind. Adam Cole to Itzigiri. And Cole, backstabber on Green. Gonna get him here. Two, no, again, Green able to kick out. And oh man, he's really pushing, Andrew Green's pushing himself to the limit here. Very impressive performance by Green. Yeah, tremendous toughness by Green. He's really hanging in there, but how much more can he take from Adam Cole? Cole bring it. Yeah, I think you're right, because Cole's getting really ticked off with this whole thing here. Oh, uh -oh. Wait, look at this, Anthony Green, the cradle, again. Adam Cole, oh, throws a super kick, Anthony Green caught it. Spins him around, Green. Flapjacks, Adam Cole, and now he's got the, the seatbelt hooked in, and the crucifix bomb, Green, uh -oh. one, uh -oh. two, no. Oh. oh, but he steps over to single leg crab. Single leg crab. Ruthless hold right here, brutal hold on someone's knee. Single leg crab locked in tight by Green. And Adam Cole, you can see he's digging those elbows in, trying to get to the bottom rope, but Green wisely brings Cole back towards center. Anthony Green really wrenching back on the knee of Adam Cole. But Cole able to turn the hips, get to his back, and fires in. Two, three up kicks to the jaw of Green, but Green, oh, look at this, uh -oh, Cole uh -oh, rolls up uh -oh. Green, two, no. Oh, faked Adam Cole, it. Fake, oh. Yeah, faked high, caught him on the knee, and now Adam Cole hits the ropes, went to lower the boom, Green with the waist lock follows. Cole in, O'Connor roll, two, no. Green out to the apron. Oh! Landed the kick to the side of the head. Adam Cole is dazed inside the ring. Anthony Green walking, talking, flying. Oh, oh the super oh. kick counter. Oh, 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 oh. Ooh. And the knee strike to the back of the head. Cole lowers the boom and gets the win. You know it's all about the power. Here is your winner, Adam Cole. And it Incredible victory for Adam Cole here in our main event, and that was all it took. That knee to the back of the head. Cole knew it, Taz. He knew he got the win with that one. Oh, absolutely. But hey, I, listen, gives a lot of credit here to Anthony Green. He stuck it out here against a top flight contender right there in Adam Cole, baby. But another victory notched up for Mr. Cole. Adam Cole keeping the momentum going here tonight on AEW Dark. And I hope you'll join us tomorrow night, AEW Dynamite, coming to you live, coast to coast, from Atlanta, Georgia, on TNT. Good night, everybody. You talk too much. Tomorrow on TNT.
AEW is live. Cody Rhodes seeks payback on Andrade El Idolo in an Atlanta street fight. Brian Danielson continues to attack Hangman's friends. And Lee Moriarty takes on CM Punk. AEW Wednesday Night Dynamite. Live tomorrow at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on TNT.